Welcome to Veteran Business Success. You can find us at VeteranBS.com where our mission is to help military veterans win the war at home by starting and growing profitable businesses. Now I'm here today with my buddy Aaron Throckmorton, who's a prior service Marine uh, deployed to Afghanistan. Can you tell us a little bit about that real quick? Yeah, deployed uh, to Afghanistan in 2005, uh, 2nd Battalion, 3rd Marines. And uh, during that time, did uh, took part in Operation Wellers and Red Wings. Uh, finished the time, shoot some dirt there, and uh, transitioned out of the military at the end of 2006. All right, so now you actually own, you, well, you've done a number of things. You're kind of like a serial entrepreneur. Like, I know you've had, like in the past, you've had the Yogi Challenge, which a lot of people have probably heard of. Yeah. Uh, and you're still doing that, right? Yes, well, there's, there's successes and failures. Um, in 2009, I got involved in multi-level marketing. Uh, did that, ran a company that did lead generation for Home Depot. So if you've ever seen the annoying cabinet refacing guys that talk to you inside of a Home Depot and try to get you to reface your cabinets, I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, did that for a while. Um, like the market was good. And then, you know, uh, a lot of adversity in 2010 when people stopped building on their homes. Uh, market Housing market kind of went down. We took some some bumps, so uh, you know, pulled my chute and pop smoke and went to school to learn just so I could, you know, I knew I always wanted to come back to entrepreneurship, but uh, mm -hmm. at the time I felt like I didn't have enough tools to equip me with, uh, to deal with the adversity. Okay. So I went to school, um, University of Texas Arlington, got a degree in advertising, specialty in, um, excuse me, communication, especially in advertising, and then a minor in psychology, finished that up. And then um, I think charity was kind of like my, um, no offense, or hopefully nobody takes offense to this, but Go for it. it was like my foreplay, <laughs> with, it was like my foreplay to see if I wanted to give entrepreneurship another go. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if anybody out there has ever run a charity or had a major role in a charity, you know it's just like any other business, you have to run it like one. Uh, from the financial scheme all the way to the so a nonprofit doesn't mean you don't make any money, right? Well, in my <laughs> case, in my case, because um, a lot of people think, oh, nonprofit, you shouldn't, you shouldn't make any money. It's like, no, they're our business. You have to make money. Yeah, and well, people, people think absolutely. they can survive on nothing sometimes. You know? Well, you know, uh, for for myself, uh, in my particular case, I didn't uh -huh. take any money. It was yeah. all about. Oh, I just meant the organization, not me. Really good. Yeah, yeah, in in general, a um, you know, a nonprofit. Most of them out there, the bigger ones, are run like a company. They do have employees, yeah. obviously, and it takes money to make the world go around. And it sure does. We all know that. Um, it's the grease on the machine that allows it to work. You know, people talk yeah, about absolutely. No, money's not the most important thing, and it's not. But good luck surviving without it. Yeah, and exactly. It, I think yeah. uh, I think the five hundred one c three world is all about building relationships, network marketing, and business development, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, one thing that my charity uh, really harped on is our um, tactical marketing strategies. Which no, is, your charity is the Agogi Challenge. Yes. Right? What is the Agogi Challenge? So the the Agogi Challenge is uh, an adaptive CrossFit event. It's um, open to people from all over the world, and genuinely, we will have people from I think our demographics are five to seven countries and thirty eight states come out and compete. Um, It'll be able body and unable, but what makes it uh, unique is it's more than a fitness event. It's actually uh, it's a job fair. It's um, a resource fair as well. Okay. It's what I like to call it is, is all the things I've never had when I first transitioned out, <laughs> all in one place. Sometimes that, that's where you get your best ideas is you go back and you go, man, if I'd only had this or if I only would have had that. And sometimes that's the best way to start a business is just solve your own problem or look back at what could have been better. And I mean, you guys have had big, giant, mega sponsors, you know, um, who was it? What, what were some of the big sponsors you, you, you actually negotiated deals with? Was it like Nissan? Well, uh, Nissan, Ford? Nissan was something that we're, we're developing right now. Okay. And then, um, well, we won't talk about that. Then. Well, no, no, it's, it's totally fine. Okay. Um, professionally, uh, uh, myself and Miles Knuff, who's a co-founder, uh -huh. uh, we've been under contract with them, um, doing competitions like the Agogi Challenge, but 
mm -hmm. uh, on the professional sense. And, but and, um, and you've also, if not to interrupt, but you've also been in touch with some people very high up in CrossFit that are looking at you know they also like the disabled athlete community as well, right? You've collaborated yes, with them. Yes, in the past, we, I think that's that's a great thing about the CrossFit community is mm -hmm. like it's very grassroots. People are open and sharing and knowledge, and so we've collaborated with people all over because uh, at the time that we were doing it, there was one other community doing it up in Virginia. It was Dave Wallish and mm -hmm. his group at CrossFit Rubicon, and we were um, working with a group called Crossroads out there, mm -hmm. and what they did was they were already like collecting data and everything like that. and. Myself and Miles, we kind of developed our own little style, and uh, we just put on the competition to raise money for organizations like Twenty Two Kill mm -hmm. and uh, Honor Career's Commitment of Dallas, and then yeah. Camp Bahala recently, and um, in one situation. Yeah. Oh, I remember Camp Bahala. I, I went out there with you guys. That's and, blast. And, and yeah. your buddies from Sons of Liberty Gunworks showed up. Uh, they came all the way from San Antonio. I remember that first night, he got there about 10 o'clock at night, he popped his trunk open, it's pitch dark, he had an entire trunk full of assault rifles, <laughs> oh, yeah. and it was awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, like two or three of them were fully automatic, I still have the videos, it's like, yeah, it was I one of the it. greatest things. It that, was, that was Camp Bahala, yeah. Yeah, it was just a smorgasbord of greatness out there. Oh, but yeah. what, what those guys were doing in organizations like them was mm -hmm. what our organization, you know, raises money for, we're more of like a distributor. We put on an event that's symbolic and it's something that people can take home here and they can take home here. They take home yeah. perspective here and they take home uh, the community here. And um, in the process, we're able to generate this and uh, help other organizations who are at it full time. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's awesome, you know, because there's a lot of organizations, they have a good cause, but they really just don't want to raise money because they're brand new. And getting that kind of assistance from you know, an organization like either yours or 22 Kill, you know, they, they know how to go out and raise funds and they can actually, they, one of the things that both of you do is uh, help distribute funds to those others, which, you know, it's sometimes in business, they think you're competition or, or fellow nonprofits and you don't want to share anything. Some people have that mentality and, and uh, I think it's really amazing that you guys can, um, you know, share funds and, and stuff like that when someone has a different cause or idea mm -hmm. and you can help them do it. Cause you know, at the end of the day, we all, at least in the veteran nonprofit community, pretty much have the same mission. We want to help veterans. That's pretty much usually the case. Oh yeah, I, I think that like with uh, us, it's just, for me personally, I and I'll probably talk about this more on the business side of things, it's just mm -hmm. uh, plugging, the great thing that I got, the payment that I received from the nonprofit world was uh, the experience of other people who had their own charities that I collaborated with. I got to learn from guys who were CEOs of their own businesses and we're not mm -hmm. talking small businesses we're talking about like guys like Michael Brower who own Tribal Solutions and then okay. works for Perimeter Global Logistics mm -hmm. these are guys that are you know real players in their community uh, and professionals in what they do and then you know of course um, so you, you didn't have to start from the ground up and just figure everything out. You actually got around people who already knew how to do a lot of things you had to do but didn't know how to do. Oh, no. I had to start from the ground up. Because no, no. I mean, well, you started, but you got around people who well, knew. They, they were able to mentor you along, so you didn't have to hit every roadblock along the way. It was – oh, I hit a lot of roadblocks. I had to yeah, you were that, natural. but um, yeah. it was more playing a good politician. Um, okay. The first year of doing something like that, people are all about seeing – like is believing yeah. so when you you have a great idea people are like oh yeah, yeah. especially in like got a great idea especially yeah. like in the veteran community <laughs> people are like i'll believe it when i see it so yeah i literally that first year i saved i had already saved up money and i was like i'm committed to doing this i, I saved up my money to pay my bills for almost a year and i didn't work and all i did was work on that charity and i was in there every day grinding away getting everything set up just for that one special day Mm -hmm. And then um, as I was doing it, I think, you know, it motivated some people. I got to get some small talk with people and I got to meet the right players to help me out with flights and different things like that. And yeah. once people started seeing things coming together, it's like anything else, they get excited. Yeah, when they see something working, they want to be a part of it. Like, exactly. if, it's, if it's floundering, they're like, you know, no one's attracted to that. Yeah. Well, they, they probably saw that you were committed. And that was a big thing too because that can be it for some people yeah. but you know i know for me it is when I, like i hear people say things like you said all the time 
But like when I see somebody and like they're really into this thing, like they're not just telling me like I'm watching them grind every day. It's like I'll do what I can to help that person. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And so um, what's your current business? So I have a business that's a landscaping company, mm -hmm. uh, primarily focuses on hiring veterans. It's okay. called uh, TKO, North Texas Landscaping. And uh, we service the DFW and surrounding areas mm -hmm. through property management, um, all the way to projects, it's covered A to Z. Um, I started that just because I found a really good opportunity and then I also found a way that I could pay it for it. Um, I like to think that we're significant in, in our particular industry in that we pay it forward by uh, allowing guys to come in and get a skill set. Yeah. Um, how it relates to me personally is I was in the infantry, you learn a particular set of skills. I'm not trying to go all the way these and on you. But, um, <laughs> no, I was infantry too, so yeah, I'm with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but when you get out, where can you apply it? It's and very. You'll, you'll find them. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, I'm going to find you. It's. <laughs> That's almost Batman. <laughs> right in trail. That's Batman. Or Sabertooth. But it was very it was very <laughs> limited and I didn't realize like how um I I I inherited a bunch of great qualities from the infantry, uh hard work, grit, determination. Yeah. Knowing and that I can do something if I really want to, because I've already done the dang near impossible things yeah now it's just transitioning into another task but the basic skills of learning things it was different okay. and so it was a struggle so i wanted to give guys every guy's not going to want to do landscaping it's hard work it's brutal and you're out in the sun especially now we got like 100 something degree heat out here yeah we're in dallas fort worth texas and it's you know at the time of this recording it's almost august so yeah, yeah. but we're where we offer something that intrigues guys is like we can offer an opportunity to eventually build their own business through us. Yeah. So we're taking a little bit of that multi-level marketing strategy that I had before, which is creating entrepreneurs and wealth through duplicating yourself and just applying it in something else. So we yeah, get that or franchising, however you look at exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Same, same thing, yeah. different words. Um, yeah. You know, companies like Chick-fil-A have done it and mm -hmm. been phenomenal with it. And so, I decided it was like phenomenal. De phenomenal would definitely uh, describes Chick Fil A. Yes, so I mean, boy. from the ground up, the employees to the owners. Yeah, excellent. I mean, all for a, a fast food restaurant that's closed on Sundays. I mean, one of the biggest sales days. And I recently heard a a number. I think that I think they were comparing. I think the McDonald's and don't quote me on this, but it was. I think they said McDonald's spent five spends five billion dollars in advertising a year. Mm -hmm. And Chick Fil A spends fifty million, mm -hmm. but Chick Fil A, I think, um, income wise, makes I think five times more than McDonald's. Probably so. And I this mean, is all like culture stuff and how they like a lot of it and how your experience there. And that's kind of what you were touching yeah, on. I mean, I, I heard one of the guys who used to run stuff high up for Chick Fil A, yeah. and what he said the one one of the major ways they uh, they determined if their uh, experience with a customer was successful is how the, is what the customer feels or experiences after the sale like a lot of people they like, get the sale mm -hmm. and then they never like hear from the, the from the they never talk mm -hmm. to the customer again or there's nothing there but they always they said they measure their success by what's the customer's experience after the sale has been made and yeah. there was even one time i wasn't here but my wife was taking my my little boy and my little girl into chick-fil-a while she parked the car in the parking lot and it was raining outside and dude this is not the Ritz Carlton, but this is exactly what happened. A Chick fil A employee ran outside with an umbrella, popped it open, and walked my wife and kids under the umbrella into the. This is a fast food, yeah, food restaurant. Yeah, and didn't ask for anything. And you've got to look amazing. At, and I think that the, you, can, you can take a lot from, from yeah. major uh, franchises like that. Like, mm -hmm. that's one of the things I like to do, and I try to put it into our company. Is Absolutely. Like, I'm. Nobody wants to be out there cutting grass or doing all that in this heat, but like our guys are happy to be there, and that's the important thing. And it's a slow build because you have to, you have to play your law of averages with people working for you, just like you do with customers. Yeah. And you know, I we have guys from the Army, we have guys from the Navy and Marine Corps coming in there, and they're doing all this. We haven't got any Air Force guys yet, but we're working, <laughs> we're working on it. 
<laughs> if, you, if, if you want a guy who will sit in an air-conditioned office, he'll, you'll probably get an Air Force guy to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I speak for the Air Force several times a year, and I'll tell you what, it's like flying first class, dude. It, it. It's a first class experience. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but, yeah that's um, interesting. What motivates them is, is the opportunity. Yeah. And I think that's where we get that from, like, Chick-fil-A, and that's something mm -hmm. that I observed a lot uh, in my experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, just having a friend who owned a Chick Fil A over in Lake Worth, and uh -huh. seeing how he did it, and when hearing him explains, the best thing you can ever do is just if you have somebody of that magnitude who's consistently bringing in three and four hundred thousand dollars a year for themselves, yeah, alone, not including their business, but you can only imagine what it is for the business. To well, get that's that, what he's taking home. Yeah, yeah. If that's yeah. what he's taking home. Um, you just shut up and listen. That's right. <laughs> that's like, right. That's like, you know, it is an experience. Well, and that's, that's, that's a big lesson because a lot of guys, and women too, a lot of guys, I mean, people, their ego is so darn big. It's like, if they don't know what's good for them, like they don't know everything, but they think they do. And you've met these kinds of people where, like, the best thing they can do is shut up and listen. I've been these kinds and just, of people. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, now you're not going to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know, when I was of, younger. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I mean, you know, yeah. nobody, nobody's perfect. Yeah. But, we, you know, when, when you get out of the military, the interesting thing, one of the things I find is that when you get out of the military, you know, you get out of a, a community, you exit a community that has structure, and you know your role, and you know your place. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting, and I said this in another interview, um, I think one of the reasons a lot of men and women struggle when they get out with the transition is not just the fact that it's a war getting out, the whole transition is a process, but by default, when we get out of the military, mm -hmm. we actually, by default, do the one thing we're always taught never to do, and that's to go somewhere by ourselves. You're always taught to go with your battle buddy, take a guy with you, you never go anywhere alone. It's like in a war zone, you never go anywhere alone. And when we get out, we get out by ourselves, and now all of a sudden we're in this different foreign land called the civilian world, where we don't have our band of brothers anymore. You know, the structure that was there is not there, and so many things change, and so, uh, it, it's, it's one of the things I've realized is just, it, it's just by default, it goes against what we do, and it sometimes causes guys to struggle. In fact, I mean, unfortunately, I lost a friend two days ago to suicide. Yeah. You know, he was a veteran, and you know, he had some other issues, but like, it's like, how much did something like that contribute? And one of the things I talk about when I talk about uh, resilience, because that's what I speak and write books on, is that you know, having a mission to live for. And that's like people with a mission to live for, they don't, they don't kill themselves, they don't give up. And when, when you give somebody, like with your company, you give somebody an opportunity to work and make progress towards something, that helps feed that sense of mission. Because if you go too long in life, like people think that like meaningless, like a, their life is meaningless because they've endured too much pain. Um, they, a lot of people think that's the only reason people give up, but a lot of people give up because they get a sense of meaninglessness from like actually having it too good or a lot of guys get out and they're on disability because of what happened to them and then they don't have to work. Well, we, you kind of reach this mountaintop syndrome where you're like, what do I do now? And there's, there's nothing to, to work towards anymore and that can actually lead people downward. You know, I, I like to um, credit the military for a lot of things, mm -hmm. but I also like to give credit to the individuals that join the military for the things that they bring to the table. Yeah. Most notably one thing, and I think everybody forgets it, and I, I've been guilty of forgetting it. Um, when you join the military, you have one important thing that you need to remember now presently as a business owner or any time that you just are trying to you know achieve a goal and that is drive yeah the ability to stand alone and make a decision and have drive is what pushed you to make take the plunge yeah and join the military nobody else did just you and it's the same thing that pushes you into entrepreneurship yeah you have to self motivated. You have to make a personal commitment that no matter how crappy it gets or how good it gets, you're gonna stick through it. And you know, if I can give anybody advice about anything, it's like mental preparation is the most important thing you can ever do before yeah. you write your executive summary, before you write your business plan. You need to write a mental plan for yourself and mm. you need to stick to it. 
and you need to like find ways to cope with your stress and deal with it and then move forward and that, I say that especially to veterans because you have different factors that have affected your life that will come up when you're stressed yeah but if you're and I deal with that even as an entrepreneur oh yeah um, I'm with you but I have a plan mm-hmm for dealing with that and how I deal with that. Yeah, so then, you, you foresee the ambush and so you plan in case it happens. Yeah. So you don't just stand there and go, what do I do when you're getting ambushed? Yeah, it's you actually, you've trained and so you, you react accordingly. Yeah. Your business is just the same as you. It reflects you. You reflect yeah. your business, vice versa. If you're That's doing good. good, your business is gonna do good. And if you're doing crappy, your business is gonna do crappy. It never goes any other way than that. Yeah. But just like how you're your business is organized, you need to have self-organization. You need to have a five yeah. paragraph order for yourself, just like you do for your business. Yep. And like, it's never gonna like be anything else. You're joined, you're one. Yeah. And so the only way to, to get through it in the starting phases is it's planning. It's all about mental preparation for yourself and then you can find solutions for everything else. You can, you can learn how to um, create a company with enough time and reading and everything. Mm-hmm. You can't learn how to create a, a positive you that's got drive and that's yeah. willing to go as far as you will to like get to where you want to get. Yeah. I, I'll tell you right now, I didn't have any landscaping experience, but I knew people who did. And I knew okay. that I foresaw the opportunity. And I sought those people hmm. out and I brought those people together and okay. in one partnership. And that takes something that I learned from the, the military, which is leadership and yep. development of people and, de- and personal development along the way. So get this. So Aaron owns a landscaping company and he had no landscaping experience, but don't miss this. He knew people who did. So he simply led them by assembling them together and creating it. So a lot of people go, well, you know, I don't have experience in this or that to have a company. Sometimes you need some experience depending on what it is, but that's awesome. Like you, you literally took an industry like that you weren't even a part of, you didn't know anything about it, and you created a profitable company around it that's growing. I mean, that, that's cool. Oh yeah, and, <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, it's a, it's a scary process, yeah, but yeah. If, if you, um, same thing when you're in the military, yeah. you know, like. You have to overcome, you buy yeah, it, you know? like, I remember the first time I got shot at. It was complete shock. I was like, "It's an interesting." Experience. I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "I was like, <laughs> I was doing what we're doing now." I was actually laughing. I was like, "What's did going you, on?" Did you hear that sharp <laughs> whiz? Yeah. That? Yeah. And then you see a little impact, and you just like left, right, right, left, right. Watch. We, we should get down. And then you're like, <laughs> then you put one and one together, and you're like, "Oh, this, yeah, yeah." And then you start engaging, and of course, you know. Um, Afterwards, you're like, "We got shot." And, and it's the same thing with like your business too. Like yeah. it has funny moments like that. Yeah. And then it has scary moments like when you lose somebody. Yeah. And you know, like it's the same thing. Uh, if I was sit here and to tell anybody that we haven't had like a roller coaster, you know. That's BS, man. That's BS because you that's what it is. You can't have a business that works yeah. without it. Like you have humans involved and you have a turbulent economy, a world turbulent economy that's always involved. Yeah. yeah. But it's just the game. Yeah, it's a but, war. It's like a war. It's the game. It's the that's battle. that's where I, I like to feel that mm-hmm. those things that I that I did learn in the infantry came in good because I'll handle that stress a lot better than other yeah. people, and I'll deal with it. And I'll well, because you've had to deal. You and I both have had to deal with it in the yeah. most extreme of life and death yeah. situations in foreign places, uncomfortable, hot, hotter than hell places. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And and I think like you know the organization skills mm-hmm. like you know, come into place and like foreseeing all worst case scenarios is natural. Like I do that when I go in a restaurant, but uh, I also do it when I like, you know, am looking at the business and like I have civilian counterparts and stuff that are like, why the hell do you do that? And I'm like, I better, better to know than and grow than to not have anything. Well, you know, in in building your business and getting people on your team, it's real a lot in a lot of ways. It's like having your platoon or your squad. Mm-hmm. It's like finding people, putting them in places. You're not meant to do everything forever, and that's a hard thing sometimes to let go of the reins and let someone mm-hmm. else do yeah, it. Yeah, it is. Realizing that yeah, they might not do it the way I do, but it'll be good enough. And, and it's hard to let go of. But whenever you do, you're usually just so 
ecstatic and, re- and just, I mean, relieved that you finally let go of that thing. I know that's a battle I've had to fight, mm-hmm. is letting go of certain things that, like, I, I know what I'm good at. I need to just, just do those and keep people in position doing these other things that makes what I do possible. Yeah, and yeah. it's like anything else. You have to take the time and invest in that particular person mm-hmm. before you can actually feel good with, like, doing the hard part and letting yeah. go. You know, you have to... Well, it's, it's easier if you know they're competent and they're reliable. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. You know what I mean? It's just a gamble. Of because of the person that could be the best friend in the world might not be the, the best work yeah. environment. Person. Hey, give the kid a sniper rifle and he can hit a target a mile away. But if you steal an ammo and food out of your, out of your rucksack... Yeah. It's like, hey, we got a problem, you know, and so it's you, you run into those sometimes. Yeah. But if I could give anybody any advice um, on this, it would, I would say, just summarizing kind of what we've talked about, it's, um, it's, if you have somebody that you're working in an immediate environment with at work, and you're looking to own a company, ask to like shadow them. Yeah. I did that. A lot, and I just I didn't say anything, mm-hmm. and I just watched yeah. as closely as I could, mm-hmm. and th- and it wasn't just anybody. It was like good people, like people who knew how to do it, people yeah. that were just doing it like yeah. every day, and you just watch them, and you just see, and it sounds kind of like you know redundant, but like if you if you look at them, you'll start putting pieces together that aren't like um, your average person. Yeah. You're, their drive, their move, their intensity, their sense of urgency. Well, that was my experience so. too, because when I got out, I met my first mentor who had been an offering speaker. He's a Vietnam vet who got injured in Vietnam. And he had been speaking for about 40 years. Mm-hmm. And he started putting me up on stage. And most of what I learned from him about speaking, mm-hmm. I didn't, he didn't like sit down and talk to me. Like we did talk. I mean, I, I traveled for an entire year with him before I started getting out of my own. Mm-hmm. About nine months in, I started booking my own events on a scale that. I was having to deviate from being with him, which is the goal, you know, flying out of the nest, you know. Um, but most of what I learned, I would just, I'd be at all of his events, and I would, I'd like, I would hear him tell a story, and I know exactly where he's going. Like, I could tell you his talk, like, yeah. verbatim. But I would, I was picking up just mentally on what he was doing. I would see little things help, and he would have, like, a really, a really serious point, and it's something that really wrenches your heart, and it's like, it's, it's all true, obviously. And it's like if it was about him, he would then he would he would take you down in this 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 story, and you're like, oh my gosh! And then he would throw in like a self-deprecating joke, and you and the whole crowd just erupts in laughter and goes comes right back up to the top. Yeah, you know, and and I would just watch him do that, and and I learned it just by being around him, like it rubbed off on him. And, that, and it sounds like that's exactly what you're saying. You're se- you're selling yourself in public speaking, and you're selling the story because I'm the product. Yeah, you're the <laughs> yeah. product, yeah. and you have people are there because they you have something they want. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, um, you know, not everybody is vibrant and confident. There's mm-hmm. a lot of people out there that struggle with that issue, and sometimes it takes they need that uh, affirmation. Is the yeah. best word. They need yeah. that affirmation, and they need you to inspire them to let you know to let them know that it's going to be okay and that's yeah. like like with sales man it, it's like five um there's the thing that i learned called five steps to a conversation and five steps to sell it's an intro Good. short story presentation close and a rehash and mm-hmm. so it's all about your body language it's all about talking points mm-hmm. and your interaction with a customer too yeah. and just coming back to that i think like and understanding where they're coming from and relating to them as you're yeah. talking yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's universal that's from yeah. like sales in my industry all the way to like sales in your industry and yeah. that's something that like you know if people gra- get a good grasp on then they're really good to go on that absolutely no well this is this has been great uh, do you have any any last i know we've gone over a lot any last piece of advice that let's say we literally have a veteran if you walked in here right now and said aaron i want to start a business uh, i want to work for myself I want to work for some 23-year-old millennial with a degree who thinks he knows it all. You know, I've done three combat tours. I want to work for myself. What What's like the one thing you would tell him? Just off the cuff, no wrong answer. I would tell I, – I think the best thing I could tell him is, like, you need to create a plan of action. Like I was telling you before, you need to create a plan of action mm. for your business, and you need to take the plunge and follow through. 
Yeah. Following through is everything. Yeah, and, and what you said earlier actually picks up on that, really is make the decision that you're gonna succeed and you're not gonna quit before you start. Well, I like I mean, because most things in life that I've ever accomplished and people I know, it's like when they when they got into stuff, like my, my co-author Chad Robichaud, he was a force recon marine um, for years and one thing he said, and my buddy Jay Redman has said it too, he was a Navy SEAL for 21 years. Yeah. And he said the biggest thing is when you when you get there, like with, with going to Bud's, he said when you get there, you decide ahead of time, the only way you're leaving is graduation. And it does like, you'll die before you won't get there. Like you, you'd rather die first. Like that kind of commitment to yourself. And when, when a person has that about something, whether it's the military or a business, it's very difficult to stop that person because they'll find a way under it, over it, around it, through it. Yeah. Square peg, round hole, sledgehammer, you know, like one way or another, this is happening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's why like, um, you know, when I when I talked about the mental preparation, mm -hmm. you need to have the drive to go there yeah. and not the quit. The reason. Yeah. yeah, and there's gonna be people that are gonna, you have to prepare and accept that people are gonna doubt you mm -hmm. and you have to, I don't want to say the word I'd normally say for it <laughs> about what you give on it, but you can't care. I'll just put that politely. Yeah. Um, you be cannot, like be a honey badger. There you you go. cannot, you cannot let yeah. doubt creep in your head. You yeah. just need to plunge and go full force at it and look at it the same mentality you would when you get on the battlefield and say like, I will die before you stop me. Yeah, and every challenge is adapt to it overcome it, get around it. I mean, you can adapt to pretty much anything if you want to. Yeah, it's and a so, no excuses mentality. Yeah. Well, Aaron, we're, uh, this has been great. Where can people find you or connect with you? What's the best way to do that? Learn about your business. Okay, well, if you wanna learn about our business, you can reach us on Facebook. Um, we uh, what's, have a- What's the, uh, the page called? It's TKO North Texas Landscaping. TKO North Texas Landscaping. So if you type that in on Facebook, uh, you can connect with Aaron there and you do mainly residential, we do residential and commercial. And residential and commercial. So if you need your lawn mode or for your, your house or your business or all your businesses, this is the guy. Projects included, irrigation all the way through. It's an A to Z uh, process. If you awesome. have something outdoors, you should be able to cover it. Right on. Well, hey, thanks for joining me today. Thank you very man. much. Good seeing you.